Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A. You asked me some juicy questions over on Instagram, so I'll be answering them while we do a full face of makeup. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kelly. I upload four videos a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. I would love to see you again, and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit, also put some clips in, and then I had to pull my hair up because it has been so hot recently. Like, I'm sweating right now. I always get asked like do you not have an air conditioner i do have an air conditioner i just turn it off when i film because it's very loud and it's right behind me so you really would not hear anything i'm saying if i kept it on but for primer lately i've really been loving this one from iconic london it is their radiance booster and i wear the shade pearl glow i've mentioned it in a few videos right now it reminds me of the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter but I feel like this works better if you're wearing it on its own. Like, the Hollywood Flawless Filter is beautiful on its own, but this, because the texture is slightly thicker than Hollywood Flawless Filter, I feel like it does even out my skin tone a little bit more than that one. Not that either one is, like, fully intended to do that, but I feel like this gives me almost a little bit more coverage, so I wear this one on its own a lot more than I do Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm just gonna link everything down below. I always do, but I feel like I won't be talking too, too much about the products today. But today for foundation, you can hear I'm like at the end of this, I'm gonna be using the Skin Perfect HD from Koki. Now, I asked you guys on Instagram to leave me your questions for this Q&A, but I also had some questions from a Q&A a while ago that I haven't answered yet, so I pulled from both. And when I was looking over the questions, a theme of most of them were like New York City based, but I tried to pull like a few different like topics and go a few directions. So I definitely will be answering a lot of your New York City questions since it sounds like a lot of you guys had some or were interested in some, but I tried to pick a variety. But this question asks, would you like to get another dog soon? If so, would you get another Boston? So if you guys are new here, I had a dog with my ex-boyfriend that I used to live with. We were together for a really long time, actually, and we lived together for three years, and we had a dog. If you guys remember, his name is Cass. He's the sweetest, nicest, most perfect Boston Terrier slash dog in the entire world. I'm obsessed with Cass. His full name is Cassius. I like to call him Casserole, and Cass really made me fall in love with Boston Terriers as a breed. Like, I am the first person now when I ever hear a friend like interested in a dog i'm always like you should get a boston terrier i think they are the nicest sweetest cutest smartest dogs ever and cassius still is just the love of my life but when my ex and i did break up he chose to keep the dog so i was not able to keep Cass. if it was up to me i i definitely would keep him it was really really hard for me to say goodbye to him but to answer this question, would I like to get another dog soon? I just don't think it makes sense for me in my life right now. I do have a cat. My roommate has a cat. So logistically, like having a dog right now would not <laughs> work out well. Tilly, my cat, liked cats, but I wouldn't say they were like super close. And I think that she prefers to be my only pet and I also don't think my roommate's cat would get along well with a dog at all. <laughs> okay, pause actually though. I say sent over some products, so I wanna try this concealer, the new one. It's called the Hydra Beam. But I do, at some point in my life, I would love another dog. I would highly, highly consider getting another Boston Terrier. I just love them so much. But having a dog anywhere is a lot of work, but especially in New York City, Having a dog is really challenging because I just don't have the space that a dog would require. I don't know if I like this actually. You know what it's reminding me of? The Ulta Beauty brand like serum concealer, which I also didn't like. Like it's really glowy, not much coverage, which I kind of knew going into it, but the way it's sitting on my under eyes, it's not that smooth. But anyways, I, what was I saying? Oh, and when I lived in Detroit with Cass, we had an apartment that was on the first floor and I had a door that went directly outside and then a door that went into the hallway of the building. So it was much easier to have a dog in that type of apartment because I could let him out really easily. Whereas now, 
it's a lot more work to take a dog outside here. So while I do really want another dog at some point in my life, I don't see that happening for me in the next five years. Today, I want like a glowy natural look. So I'm going in with a super hot pink blush, which sounds so contradictory to what I just said. I guess what I mean is I don't want to look like I'm wearing, what am I trying to say? I want to be really blushed and like rosy pink, but I don't think I'm going to go like super glam anywhere else. So the blush I'm going to use today is this hot pink from Makeup Revolution. This is their super dewy blush in You Had Me At First Blush. But this comment made me laugh. They asked, what is my most Midwestern habit? So if you guys are new here, I am from Michigan. I think I've already said that in this video, but my most Midwestern habit is probably just saying the word ope all the time. Anytime I like bump into something, ope. Anytime something falls, I'm like, ope. And I... I know people say that outside of the Midwest also, but that feels very like quintessential Midwest language. Like, oh, oh, excuse me there. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. A lot of you guys were asking about like my rent in New York. Is my rent expensive? And I've kind of talked a little bit about that before, but this question says, has your rent gone up? And I think they might be asking this because I feel like, well, rent is really going up everywhere but especially in New York City, it has been just climbing so fast. And I've, I've, I don't know if it's because I'm in the bubble of living in New York, so I feel like everybody's talking about it. You might live somewhere else in the country or the world and you're like, no, Kelly, not everyone's talking about rent in New York. It's just like, that's what it feels like to me because that's what everyone around me is talking about. But rent all over the city is going up so fast right now. And my rent specifically just to give you guys numbers my lease is about to be up and we just got our lease renewal a couple days ago well a couple weeks ago and our rent is going up 800 dollars a month which sounds so high yes but i've also heard of so many people in new york that have had rent increases like double or just like going up so high so i'm also going to use the cream bronzer from say this is called sun melt in light bronze which i think is the lightest shade but just to kind of break down that number increase, it is technically more so increasing 500 instead of 800. And that's because we had a COVID deal last year. So almost anywhere that you were renting a year ago, you were getting a COVID incentive. So you were getting a discount on your lease. They might build it into your lease like one month free, two months free, a half month free at like the height of everything, I was seeing apartments going for like four months free. And on some of those apartments, you would get those months like periodically. Like you would have, you would pay for three months, you would get a free month. You would pay for three, you'd get a free month. Or like the end of your lease, one month would be free. But some buildings would instead just calculate it out. So your, your discount, instead of getting one month off or a certain number of months off, you would get a number subtracted from your cost every single month. And that was what happened with our unit. So we essentially saved, not essentially, we literally saved $300 every month on our rent based on how it was built into our lease. So we knew when the lease was up to expect it to at least go back up to that pre-COVID rate of $300. But we were obviously optimistic that like it would stop there or it would only go up another like hundred or a couple hundred dollars over that. But no, so in total, it went up $800, but 500 of that was the actual increase and 300 of that was from the COVID deal. But I'm actually going to do another video later this month, just kind of with a life update, tell you what is going on with that because that has been just so stressful. I'm going to address that in another video. This question asks, what touristy thing in New York City is worth it? And there was another one that was, where did it go? Oh, what non-tourist things do you recommend? So I wanted to share both for anyone coming to New York. Maybe I'll do a video one day of like my best recommendations in the city. But for the touristy option, I say walk the Brooklyn Bridge. It's just such a beautiful, like free thing to do to see gorgeous city views. I remember the first time I ever came to New York City, that was the highlight of my trip. I remember going home and just like talking about how beautiful the views were up there. It does get very busy up there. It is a long walk across the bridge, but I recommend it. I would say the best way to do it though is to start on the Brooklyn side and walk into the Manhattan side because if you want to see views of the Manhattan skyline, that's a better direction for you to walk. But to answer the question of non-touristy things to do, 
I wanted to break this one down kind of in two parts. I wanted to give more of a specific example of like an actual thing I would do and then just a general tip for enjoying your time in New York City. So my general tip to like non-touristy thing, I would say make sure you spend some time outside of Midtown Manhattan. New York City is giant. It's so much more than just Manhattan and it's so much more than even just like specific neighborhoods in Manhattan. And I think so often when people come to New York, a lot of the very touristy things to do are in Midtown, like seeing Times Square, seeing the Empire State Building, going to Rockefeller Center. And yeah, I do think all of those things are like must-sees while you're here. I also think like the best parts of New York, well, some of the best parts of New York are outside of those areas. Personally, my favorite part of Manhattan is uptown, like the Upper East Side, the Upper West Side. It's a lot quieter, it's so clean, it's very family oriented, the architecture is beautiful. And if you grew up watching like rom-coms that took place in New York and movies that show like beautiful New York City brownstones, like if you want to experience that feel, like that's the area that you're gonna feel it. I mean, also there are places downtown like in the West Village that also have that feel, but for me, I really love just walking around and taking in all of the architecture, all of the buildings. There's just so much history here. And for my more specific example, this is one I highly recommend if you're coming to New York on a budget, I mean, even if not on a budget, but especially if you're trying to do this on a budget and you still wanna see some beautiful views, you want that like nice skyline photo, you can get that on public transit. So I'm specifically referring to the ferry and the Roosevelt Island tram. And since they're both public transportation, they're only $2.75. So the Roosevelt Island tram, you can you enter, I think it's around 59th on the east side. You just take your Metro card, which you can buy there. And again, it's $2.75 to ride it. It goes onto the island. And if you turn around, you can see just the most beautiful like 360 views of the Manhattan skyline. And then once you're there, you can walk around the island, get more of like a chill experience, especially if you've been in the city and you're very overwhelmed by all the noise, all the sounds, all the people. It's very different on Roosevelt Island. Also the ferry. So it's a little confusing because there are a lot of ferries that come and go from New York City, but the ones that are like public transit are 275 and they have ferry landings in every single borough. There are a ton in Manhattan. If you're staying there, you can easily get to Brooklyn, to Queens, wherever you wanna go. Like the ferry is actually very convenient. And if you want, I would say probably the most convenient if you're staying around Midtown where a lot of people do stay when they come. The ferry is around 35th on the east side. There's a landing there. You buy a ticket there, it's $2.75 and you can ride it. I mean, it'll go like all the way down. Like you can stay on as long as you want. You can get off in Brooklyn, it'll come back to Manhattan if you wanna do that. There's also an app and you can buy your tickets on the app. You can look at times on the app and it really is some of the best views in the city. So if you want like a gorgeous boat ride and you're like, I don't wanna pay a hundred dollars to go on some like boat tour around New York, take the ferry. They're also, you can buy snacks on there, drinks on there. Like you can stay on for a while. It's really pretty, very clean. You can sit on the bottom or you can sit on the top. I can't recommend the ferry highly enough. This question is top two things to do in Detroit. So if you guys don't know, that's where I lived in Michigan for the last few years before I moved to New York. And Detroit is such a beautiful city. There is so much to do there. There's so much history in Detroit. People don't realize like Detroit is a very old city. The architecture is beautiful. Things to do in Detroit, obviously go to the Detroit Institute of Art. It's an incredible museum. It's so beautiful on the inside and the outside. I would also say walk on the river walk. So you, it's, it's pretty long. You can park your car, walk in. You can start, I mean, there are a lot of different places you can start. And the view on the river walk, you can kind of see a little bit of the skyline, but on the other side is Canada. So you can see Windsor, Canada on one side, Detroit on the other side. It's usually pretty lively there. There's like some grass if you wanna sit down with, on a chair. That was one thing I would always do when I had friends come to visit. I'm like, let's go to the Riverwalk. This question asks, how was my trip with Peach and Lily? Faves from the brand and are they cruelty free? So if you guys don't know, I did just get back from Chicago. Peach and Lily is an Ulta exclusive brand and 
as you guys know, I feel like I talk about this a lot, but I'm part of the Ulta Beauty Collective for 2022. So they brought the entire collective over to Chicago for a little trip, which was really fun. As you guys know, I'm from the Midwest, so I grew up going to Chicago a lot. I really, really love that city and it was just such a beautiful trip. And I just felt so grateful that I got to attend. And yes, they are cruelty-free. They're Leaping Bunny certified. You guys know I only work with cruelty-free brands. And my favorites, so the glass water moisturizer, glass water, am I saying that right? No, glass skin water gel moisturizer is my top favorite. Today I'm actually wearing the glass skin serum. I feel like that's probably their most popular. That entire line is really popular for them. They had some products waiting for us at the hotel room when we got there, and there was this one mask that I've been wearing almost every night since then. Let me look up what it's called. It is the Overnight Star Sleeping Mask. That's the blue one. This is so hydrating, you guys. I love any sleeping mask. Like Those are some of my favorite products since I do have a drier skin type. And this one, I'm telling you, like the next morning after I used this, my skin was so, so smooth. But the water gel moisturizer was a favorite of mine like long before the trip, long before I even knew they were gonna take us on that trip. It was just such a cool experience, not only to meet all these other creators in person, everyone was so nice. Also, everyone that works for the brand was so nice, but they also had Alicia Yoon, who is the founder of Peach and Lily, come in and talk to us. She also walked us through facial yoga, which was something I didn't know much about. It was pretty cool. But the founder is actually an esthetician herself, and they talked so much about how particular she is with every single formulation. And she really was just one of the absolute nicest people I've ever met. She was, it was so wonderful listening to her speak about the brand and just about skincare in general. I did make like a little mini vlog for TikTok and I posted over on my Instagram stories too. So if you guys follow me on either of those, you might have seen it. This question asks, I've tried to follow many makeup tutorials, but still can't recreate the same look. Why? So I would say this is something that happens to me all the time also no matter the look you're trying to recreate it's going to look very different on everyone because we all have such different shapes to our faces so especially if you're following an eyeshadow tutorial unless the person has the exact same eye shape as you it's going to look different even if you're following an exact tutorial so just kind of go into it thinking that like this is going to be my interpretation of the look like it's not going to look the same but it's going to look my way I had a couple comments like this asking what is my least favorite thing about living in New York and anytime I do any Q&A's I get comments like this like do you hate New York? What do you hate the most about New York? And I mean in general I, I really just love this city so the pros outweigh the cons for me but obviously anywhere you live will have pros and cons and New York City is such an interesting place. There definitely are downsides to living here. There are plenty of times where it is just not glamorous at all. But I would say for me, a lot of the things that I might think of as cons or like my least favorite parts of the city kind of come back to one central theme, just about the high, high cost of living here. And I'm thinking about doing a video soon about like what I've learned after living in New York for a year, or maybe like the best and worst parts about living here just to kind of share some more insight in that so let me know if that's a video you'd like to see i'm thinking about filming that in the next month or so at the end of the day though like that's something i was pretty prepared for when i came here i i obviously knew that i think that's one thing everyone knows about new york is that it just is expensive here so it was expected but it definitely makes living here harder so i'm going to use this lipstick from bite this is a lip stain if this is still available i'll link it like i'll link everything always obviously but bite is going out of business as we know but this shade is sangria slush when these came out i think it was like two or three years ago i was really obsessed with these but this question asks if i have any tips for coping with grief oh i'm so sweaty right now you guys I have a literal sweat mustache i'm like should i tap this out with a sponge or is that gross definitely be washing this right after but if you guys are new here or you you didn't know my dad passed away a little over a year ago and my brother passed away almost 10 years ago so i feel like i have a lot of experience with grief and this is really hard to apply while talking but my biggest tip would be 
to let yourself be sad. So often I hear people say things like, I just need to stay busy, I need to find ways to distract myself, and that can be helpful in the moment, and I do think it's important to strike a balance between both, but if you're always finding ways to distract yourself, you're not working through your feelings in the way that you need to to help yourself heal. So I think just letting yourself sometimes have a bad day is the best thing you can do for yourself. And it's hard too because everyone experiences grief so differently. Some people might have an easier time while someone else has a harder time or someone might appear to be having an easy time and you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes or in their head. So I wouldn't compare your own grief journey to anyone else's. Even someone else who you think, you know, we're in the exact same position because your life has looked different than theirs, your experiences have looked different than theirs, so it's natural that your grief will also look different than theirs. But just allowing yourself to have a bad day and to be sad can go a long way. And let me just take the blush brush, tap over it a little bit, because my vision for this look was like just some really bright, rosy look with like the super bold cheeks tying in with the red lip if you'd like me to do q a's like this even more often let me know down below but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye